just to see how it works from the shell. So let's open an instance here, and we'll do so from our local system. We don't need to be root. We'll drop out of roots shell, and then FTP as anonymous to the IP address. Again, if the host name is configured, it'll work as well. And here, FTP is throwing an error. Let's try it without username. We'll quit. And just try to connect to the IP address. Now it takes it. So it didn't take the user at. So we'll have to indicate anonymous. And then indicate a password. And now it's allowed us in. And we should be able to ls and see the pub directory. And there's the file. If we want to get it, we can execute mget one mil star. And this will download it and return the transfer rate. And we have it available. An exclamation ls will show that the file has been downloaded. But we have so many instances of one million that it's hard to tell. Exclamation lsltr would reveal the item at the bottom of the list. And an LS on the server returns what's there. Now how about trying to upload an item to the server? Let's see, we have 1,000,000.txt.tar.gz. Let's try to input it. And we'll indicate yes, permission denied. Now why are permissions denied? Well, if you take a look at etc vsftpd vsftpd.conf, you'll see exactly why. Anonymous access enabled is enabled, local access is enabled, write access is enabled, but the anonymous user has its own write directive. And because it's disabled, the user is unable to write to the server. For example, here it is. Anonymous upload enabled equals yes, but it's commented. Anonymous make directory write enabled equals yes, but it's commented. So the effective permission is that it is disabled for the user. They are unable to write changes. The general write enabled will apply to the local users. So above we saw write enabled equals yes. This will permit writes for local users. Will not permit writes for anonymous users if the anonymous upload enabled is set to commented or no. So that's why the user is unable to upload items as anonymous. Now how about connecting as a privileged user? Let's do so from the shell. We'll drop our permissions and then connect again, this time as the user Linux CBT, which it defaults to, like SSH would. Then we'll indicate Linux CBT's password, see if it lets us in. It's going to check it. If it doesn't like it, that means we've typed it in incorrectly. Here, let's try it again. And we timed out, so we'll connect again. And this time it throws an error after having specified the correct password, and that is it cannot change to the user's home directory again. This is SE Linux stepping in the way, so let's quit and examine the contents of the log file, via log messages that is. It'll explain what's going on. There it says SE Linux is preventing the user. Use SE Alert with the following code to get more information. So I'll copy it, clear screen, reset the buffer, then paste, and then let's see what the suggestion is to get around this SE Linux problem. And if we scroll up, there is a, a set SE bool command which will do the trick. So we need to turn on the FTP home directory booling, which allows FTP to service users from their home directories within an SE Linux context. Let's go ahead and execute this. Let's just include this on the list. The set SE bool permits users access to their home directory.
This will make the change, then we'll need to restart the VSFTPD instance. for changes to take effect and then try to connect again as a normal user meaning a non-anonymous user and now when we re-execute FTP which we'll find momentarily and it's not showing up, oh, it's in this window And now we're in the user's home directory on the remote system. The remote system has a new user on XCBT, so there are no files. If we connect and create a file, we'll see it. We'll call it libxcbt.txt. And then in the FTP window, we'll ls, and there's the file. We can get it. This will pull it to our local system, returning a transfer rate. ls Linux cbt.txt will confirm that it was transferred. We may also put files to the remote system if we'd like. The permissions are in place. But one problem with this implementation is that it isn't change root jailed, which means we can actually navigate to the root of the file system, which is generally not desirable. Here's the whole rule of the file system, logged in as a non-privileged user. Obviously, we won't be able to make changes to entries that we don't own or have permissions to via group membership, but nonetheless, it's never good to be able to explore the whole rule of the file system using a clear text-based protocol such as FTP. So with that said, we should update the VSFTPD configuration. So the fifth option, or the fifth task, is to change root jail local users and disable anonymous access, just to tighten up the security a bit. So with that said, on the remote system as root, we'll modify the primary config file, vsftpd.conf. We'll set anonymous enable set to no, or comment it out. Either or will do. We'll look for our change root option. There's a way to change root list as well. For example, you could indicate a list of users who should be change rooted, or indicate that all users should be change rooted. Now that option, although it's not specified in this document, can be obtained by manning vsftpd.conf and just keep searching through the directives for the change root option. This is the list option we just saw, but here's the option, change root underscore local underscore user. The default is set to no, which is why we're able to navigate to the root of the file system. That's vsftpd.conf again. You can paste it anywhere in a document, such as at the end, change root local user equals yes and we'll just indicate jails users into their home directories we'll save the changes and again restart the daemon so we've set the directive change root local user equals yes this jails users and then we'll restart again the service and test connectivity now on a very busy system you can flirt with reloading versus restarting the service in the event that you'd like to see directives take effect without disrupting connected users so with that said, let's restart the service, which should be in our history, and then again attempt to connect to the jailed environment. So from the local system, let's quit the FTP session, and then reconnect.
now when we type pwd, you'll see we appear to be at the root file system, but we're really in the user's home directory. And if we change directory forward slash, we're still in our home directory. So we've improved the security of the system. Now how about testing anonymous? So service start, test connectivity as anonymous and non-anonymous users. So we've tested non-anonymous. Let's confirm that anonymous is unable to connect. And as you can see, this is taking a while to make its decision, but that doesn't let us in. Instead of returning anonymous disabled or anonymous access not permitted, it simply tells us login failed, and it logs it in Varlog messages, or optionally in Varlog vsftpd.log, if you've indicated as such in the configuration file. And in order to do so, you'll just ensure that the extra log setting is set to yes, which defaults the Varlog vsftpd.log from the shell of the remote system. We'll simply modify vsftpd.conf and find the X for log session, or section that is. It's enabled and it defaults to varlog vsftpd.log, but you can uncomment it just to be sure that it will log to that file. Save the changes, restart. This will restart it and then it'll maintain items distinctly. And also recall there is a log rotate entry as a result of installing this daemon and it will rotate vsftpd.log when it finds it using the default settings inherited from etclogrotate.conf since there are no settings defined in vsftpd.log this tells us it will do so weekly and keep it or rotate four times keeping it for a month now for the older log entries, you'll find them in the extra log file. So less var log extra log will include the puts and gets. And there they are. And who the user connected as, so on and so forth. So for example, we connected from Firefox, it's supplied as a password, mozilla.example.com. However, otherwise we see connectivity for other sessions, like CBT and so on. So that said, we've connected using VSFTPD. Remember, it supports all sorts of features, including transfer rate limits, and then VSFTPD.conf will reveal those directives, which allows you to restrict the speed at which users, either anonymous or otherwise, are able to upload and download to the server. You may also change route based on a list. You may also allow change mods of files and or directories. You may challenge uploads, meaning change ownership. So a user may upload a file, let's say, as Linux CBT, but you may want the file to be saved under someone else's credentials. That's quite possible using VSFTPD. You can set up a list of email addresses, addresses offensive email addresses to 